Hey VC, it's me Roger back with another video. A video I've been wanting to make for a while. Uh, this one's for Zach, Zeke, the vinyl geek, I think he calls his channel now. Uh, everybody knows Zach, uh, great guy. I've actually gotten to meet him. Uh, lives in Colorado, which is the land of a thousand records. Um, yeah, I got to go dig in there. And, uh, he shows amazing things on his channel. And one of the things that he shows um, with some frequency is uh, country music. And country music doesn't get a lot of love in the VC. Uh, Colin Medicine Horse shows some country from time to time and some other folks. Uh, it's not like I could see every video in the VC, God, no. Um, but, uh, and I'm personally not a huge fan of country music. But I grew up with it, kind of. If you've been with me since the beginning, um, you've seen this record, which was my parents. I remember hearing this as a kid. It's the best of Jim Reeves. Uh, the song, He'll Have to Go, was kind of their song after he got back from the army. Because my mom was dating someone else. My dad said, he's going to have to go. Uh, this is total Nashville, country Paulton smooth pop stuff and um, I have it for sentimental reasons obviously uh, before I forget in the background I'm listening to Susan Alcorn's latest CD which doesn't come out till next month uh, it's called Soul Dad it's out on relative pitch yeah Full disclosure, I'm friends with this guy, Kevin Riley, one of the guys behind Relative Pitch, shoestring operation, um, but they put out amazing things. I'm going to make a video series about the label. Uh, but yeah, I talked about her LP, and I await the resurrection of the pedal steel in my last video, which sparked some interest, I guess, which is cool. Yeah, this comes out next month. It's solo pedal steel with one improvisation with uh, Michael Formanek on bass. Um, and mostly covers of Astro Piazzolla music. Yeah, solo pedal steel in a jazz context. A beautiful, beautiful record. Um, I'm going to get to meet her, I hope, next month when she comes uh, to Nashville. So, and I I hope it's not too loud. The music in the last video was a little loud, wasn't it? I'm sorry about that. Anyway, cheers, Zach. Zach's also known for making some epic long videos. This might be one of those kind of videos, and um, it's for you, buddy. Um, you would think living in Nashville that you know, I would be surrounded by country music all the time. And, um, you know, living here, it's really not like that. Um, there are parts of town, Lower Broadway, uh, where, yeah, it's it's a country western circus. But uh, for the most part, it's just another industry like any other. Um, we love it here in Nashville. So, yeah, I'm going to, I pulled some stuff off my shelves. I was surprised how much I have considering I don't really listen to country music. Um, but I, I'm going to show what I have. Um, here we go. I think everyone can agree that Johnny Cash is great. Um, I kind of regret a statement I made in my last video about country music not being a hotbed of creativity. and um, That's overstating things, I think. Um, Johnny Cash is great. And so this is not a vintage piece at all, it's uh, Sunday's compilation of his Sun singles in mono, two LPs, a nice skatefold, sounds great. Um, as many of you know, Sun really made a hash of Johnny Cash's catalog, you know, with, like rechannel for stereo, I mean, that's kind of the problem with a lot of vintage stuff is um, you want the mono. Uh, this is great comp on Sundays, rarely available, sounds great. Uh, all those classic Johnny Cash songs. Uh, hey Porter, and I Walk the Line, there you go. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, just <laughs> Luther played the boogie. Yeah, great. Johnny Cash. Um, some days at another great 2LP comp of Jerry Lee Lewis, his son singles. Uh, a little more rock and roll than country, but he later became kind of a country guy, and uh, there's some definite country cuts on here. Uh, had to pull it because it, um, you know. Yeah, these are cool. And so, yeah, the rest of this is going to be pretty much vintage stuff, and to be honest, I'm not sure where I got a lot of this stuff. Um, here you go, more Johnny Cash. The fabulous Johnny Cash on Columbia. Uh, original mono. Uh, I still miss someone. It's kind of the hit on this. Yeah, Johnny was great. Here's the sound of Johnny Cash on Columbia. Yeah, it's nice. I don't think you can overstate the importance of Rick Rubin's American recordings with Johnny Cash to resurrect his career and cement his legacy. I'd love to have those in vinyl. Uh, here's Orange Blossom Special, kind of a concept album, I guess. Uh, these are all originals, like uh, 360 Sound, 2i, 3i, 6i, whatever. Uh, let's have a look here. Really don't know where I got this. I guess a 2i would be correct. Super clean. And like I said, I never play them, so. so original inner sleeve. How, here's how records give you more of what you want. They don't need to tell me. Uh, here's like an 80s pressing of this. Uh, I actually gave this to my parents or my dad at some point. And, I inherited it. Uh, it's a twofer with uh, at Folsom Prison and San Quentin. Classic, you know, live in the jailhouse uh, from the 60s, I guess. Uh, late 60s, early 70s, not sure. I'd love to have originals of, of those. Johnny Cash. Now, for me, Country music was my parents' music, and I was into other stuff, um, including like the Grateful Dead. And but what put me off about the Grateful Dead was all that country stuff. And um, it took me a long time to to get into that. And um, but one of the guys that Garcia used to talk about being a big influence was um, this guy Buck Owens. That whole Baker Bakersfield sound. Uh, best of Buck Owens on Capitol. Um, and you know, you can hear it, in, particularly in the way Garcia approaches uh, rhythm guitar and uh, incorporating lead and rhythm at the same time. Uh, it is, it's right out of this stuff, among, among other things. Um, there's definitely a banjo thing going on too, because Garcia was a great banjo player too. Uh, but yeah, uh, Buck Owens. Cool. Uh, here's another one. Uh, America's well, most wanted band, Buck Owens Buckaroos. Now, you might think of Buck Owens as being that guy on Yee Hee Haw. And he was, wasn't he? Uh, this is great. Kind of interesting how it says free, but it's like perforated into the cover there. It's kind of old school promo. Here's some classic stuff. Just between you and me, Porter Wagner and Dolly Parton. Parton? Dolly Parton. Excuse me. Um, yeah, this is great. And Dolly Parton is She's great. She's a great lady. She's a great songwriter. She's a great singer. Um, you know, big hair and the boobs and stuff. You know, she she knew how to 
make that work for herself, but I've never met her or seen her, but my wife, who's a librarian, has uh, been in the same room with her and uh, said she's just a lovely person. And uh, everything I've heard is. Uh, and Porter Wagner, you know, is this big, you know, Grand Ole Opry star. And uh, I saw him on the street one day and uh, kind of recognized him and said hi. He waved. Seemed like just a regular guy. Um, yeah, that's cool. Here's another one. Porter Wayne and Dolly Rebecca. Porter Wagner and Dolly Parton. Parton. God, why can't I say her name? The dynamic duo of country music. Look at those outfits. Holy smokes. Here's Dolly. Uh, just the way I am. This is on uh, it's, uh, RCA Camden, so it's kind of a budget comp, I guess. There's a little bird on it, and uh, her doing it in the ghetto, which is really great. Uh, yeah, Dolly Parton. Here's an oldie. Uh, I know Zach has it because he showed it in some video recently. Uh, the one and only Lefty Frizzell. Unfortunately, it's got masking tape all around the spines, and I investigated removing it, and it was just, no, it wasn't going to work, so that's too bad. This is old. This is early 50s, I'm guessing? I don't know. <laughs> Look at that cover. Yeah. There's Bluegrass Hootenanny with George Jones and Melville Montgomery. This is an old one, too. Artists. Sixty four, it says. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Ferlin Husky sings the songs of Music City, USA. That would be Nashville. Uh, Countrypolitan kind of smooth stuff. On Capital. Kind of one of these is like artifacts of like another era more than to like listen to this wandering with Eddie Arnold I like that blue tinted cover and uh, this is on RCA yeah. 50 sometime uh, again very contrapolitan smooth Nashville sound kind of stuff uh, but in early um, some nice stuff on this. This is really nice. Sons of the Pioneers, Cool Water, 17 Timeless Western. Let's say favorites, yes. Um, check out the uh, hi fi, you might want to play it on. Fine phonograph. Yeah, I kind of like this stuff. Living Stereo. Uh, this is a Country Music Hall of Fame thing. Came out in, in the 80s. 87. The Leuven Brothers. Radio Favorites. 51 to 57. It's cool. Leuven Brothers. Proto Rock and Roll. Yeah, cool. Now, I don't seek out country records, really, and you would think, again, living in Nashville, that the bins would be awash in country music, and I guess they are, I just don't really go looking for it. Um, but I found this in a dollar bin at Grimey's, Mint, and I thought, well, what the hell, Charlie Rich, Behind Closed Doors? I remember that, that tune, that was a hit. Look at him, Gray Fox. Produced by Billy Sherrill, uh, you know, legend in Nashville. Uh, 73 on Columbia. He was an interesting cat, because um, he had some like jazz leanings and could actually play the piano and uh, had a real dark side, uh, you know, manifested in 
alcoholism, I believe. Um, uh, but yeah, the, some some deep stuff here. You know, you know. I say I don't like country music, but this is great. This is yeah. There's Willie Nelson, Family Bible, him doing. Uh, you know, sacred stuff. 1980. This is kind of in the wrong place here. Here's a classic one. Phases and Stages uh, from 1974 on Atlantic. Kind of looks like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Brent Hines from Mastodon here. Willie, you know, another guy that you can't help but love, right? Here's William Family Live, white label promo on uh, Columbia from, when is this from? 1978. Uh, kind of a fun record. What's interesting is that, you know, he and his band are still playing the same set pretty much today. Double record in the gatefold. White little brawn inside it. Did I say that? The timing strip tells you that, right? Uh, here's uh, Whalen and Willie. Take it to the limit. Um, this is from. This is on Columbia from '83. Uh, outlaw period, I guess. Speaking of which, the outlaws. Whalen, Willie, Jesse Coulter, Tom Paul Glazer. 1976. These are really not in the right order, are they? Yeah, this is classic, right? And then uh, country music was kind of hip for a little while. Graham Parsons. Uh, got this at record store day last year uh, this is the numbered edition of um, 180 gram haha <laughs> alternate takes from uh, GP and Grievous Angel I love Graham Parsons this is cool kind of racing through this a lot of records here um, so yeah Graham Parsons uh, Emmy Lou Harris kind of made her name with him, and uh, I love Amy Lou Harris. Um, the Wrecking Ball is like my favorite of hers. Um, I have it on CD. I, I guess it came out on vinyl, I don't know, but that's an awesome CD. Um, so I have some of her LPs. This is Elite Hotel, uh, Warner Brothers from uh, 1975. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, this is Roses in Snow. Kind of a acoustic, bluegrassy sort of record. She's so pretty. I met Emmy Lou actually at a Bob Dylan concert here in Nashville. Uh, yeah, she was sitting at the bar and uh, and she went over to the, like the merch table and like I've got to go say hello so I said hello and she was really nice um, yeah she does a lot of uh, like animal rescue dog rescue work here in Nashville There's Cimarron later Warner Brothers from 1981 you know looking at these it makes me think I really would like to have all of her records um, there's Evangeline Uh, Luxury Liner, 1977. Yeah, these are out of order. Um, yeah, this is classic. Um, yeah, Brian Ahern, in the 70s. I mean, the Harris records are really nice. 
He's Johnny Cash's daughter, Roseanne Cash. Uh, seven Year Ache on Columbia from 1981. A little produced by Rodney Crowell. A little more rocking. And, you know, but this is a great record. Here's uh, King's Record Shop. 1987, I guess. A little slick, but you know, that's what you get. Yeah, this is good. Good modern country. Um, here's a couple of <laughs> things I got when I was first getting back into vinyl, like in a big way, like right around the time I got married, 22 years ago. Um, and uh, so this is, I think, uh, classic records pressing. Of, uh, anyway, Shaver, Tramp on Your Street. So, you know, Billy Joel Shaver, another figure from like the Outlaws period, uh, great songwriter. That's his son, who died of an overdose eventually. Um, this is from 1993. Um, yeah, rocking. His son brought like a rockin' edge and Billy Joel Shaver just is, is like his craggy old self, and I haven't listened to this in a million years. I, I should after I make this video, I'm gonna put this on. Um, here's more Shaver, Unshaven, Shaver live at Smith's Old Bar, which I think is in Chicago. Um, yeah, another I think it's classic did these, all analog I believe. Yeah, I, I need to listen to these again. Thanks, Zach, for. What can you think of this stuff? Here's Steve Earle's Copperhead Road um, from 1988 on Uni. Isn't that nice how it tells you it's a digital recording? Great cover. Almost done here. Wow, I really whipped through these. Uh, now, Zach, if you're still watching, and you don't have this, even though I know you're a vintage guy, I think this is something you really, really, really like. Um, this is Shelby Lynn's Just a Little Lovin'. Inspired by Dusty Springfield and that Dusty in Memphis record. This is such a great country soul record. She can sing. And now, there's like a regular pressing on Lost Highway, which is digital, but mastered by Doug Sachs sounds okay, but I I love this record so much, I sprung for the Analog Productions uh, version of this, where they actually insisted on them going back and reassembling a tape to work with, all analog. So this is all analog. Recorded by Al Schmidt at Capitol. One of those rare times where you have like audiophile sensibility combined with like great music making. This is so killer, Zach. Yeah. I might even have to send you this. DCLT. Shelby Lynn, just a little loving. Uh, CD sounds great too, really, it does. Um, excellent stuff. Now I'm going to close with a record I showed before, and here's Martina McBride's last record, Everlasting, on her own uh, vinyl recordings. Uh, apparently this is a one-off, she's signed to a new label recently. This, and I said this before, this wants to be this, but comes up short in my estimation. That's all I'm going to say about it. Um, I'm glad I have it. It's certainly way better than a lot of the other mainstream country stuff that I hear that's coming out of Nashville these days. I'll definitely, definitely give it that because it's going for like a country soul thing and it's trying to do something interesting with covers instead of being beholden to the Songwriting Mafia in Nashville that I 
personally think is responsible for largely responsible for why current country music kind of sucks Ooh, I'm gonna regret saying that maybe but it's just my opinion but um, yeah that's all I'm gonna say cheers Zach I hope you enjoyed that I hope you enjoyed the background music this comes out next month CD only I mean give these folks a break this, they don't have money to put out vinyl lug it around on tour and stuff um, yeah Susan Alcorn sold that Thanks for watching, everybody. Excuse my strong opinions. They come flying out of my mouth sometimes. But I'm going to listen to some of these country records. I mean, it's going to be fun. Cheers, Zach. Cheers, everybody. Take care. I'll see you soon.